All right, so welcome this afternoon to the webinar on the test of early language and literacy. Um, we are extremely excited this afternoon um, on behalf of BRLC to share this assessment with you, this diagnostic test. And we're uh, fortunate enough to be able to have the, uh, the developers of this diagnostic test with us, uh, Drs. Linda Phillips and Denise Hayward. And they're going to take us through uh, an overview of this, uh, of the TEL, as well as, as I mentioned earlier, provide an opportunity for questions and answers towards the end of our time together today. So welcome, uh, Linda and Denise, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar. I'm Linda Phillips, and of course, uh, Denise Hayward is my colleague, and so we will share the webinar presentation. I will start and provide some of the interesting historical background on the initiation and inherent characteristics of TEL, and explain some of the unique diagnostic features. Denise will then discuss how TEL is organized, introduce the uh, test booklet, provide an overview of the testing options, mention some of the technical features, and describe the nature of reporting on and interpretation of the TEL results. And then finally, we will move to your questions and comments. So why TEL and what did it take? In 2005, a research management committee of a National Center of Excellence held focus groups and invited every department of education every school district, and other educational organizations to name four areas of major concern. The need for a Canadian assessment instrument for young children ages three to eight years of age was on the top of the list. So in 2006, we were asked to write a proposal and to compete nationally for funding. In 2007, we learned we were successful and began a comprehensive literature review and started the development of TEL. For the next three years, we had a draft of each section in hand. When we had a draft of each section in hand, we began the pilot testing. And based on the results, we would revise and retest until all aspects were thorough and unambiguous. We pilot tested every section of the TEL an average of three times. And for instance, any item that all children could answer had to be thrown out. Any item too difficult for any children to answer was also thrown out because they were not discriminating among the children and therefore of no diagnostic value. Ambiguous items were also revised and retested. Then for the next three years, we undertook the TEL National Normative Testing all across Canada. And then came the data analysis and compilation of the many drafts of the comprehensive manual. The final copy of TEL was completed in 2015 and published by Nelson Education in 2016. So you can see that it was a long and extensive period of development and work. So the test of early language and literacy is comprehensive because it addresses the two major aspects of emergent development, namely language and literacy. It is systematic because it provides all of what is needed for the recording and scoring of each section in a coherent, organized, efficient manner, and all in one test booklet. And it is developmental, because all sections proceed in a developmental manner, each building on and more challenging than the previous section. Each language and literacy section is based on the best that the research and pedagogical literature has to offer, and TEL is individually administered to children three to eight years of age inclusive to maximize the quality and quantity of information gathered for effective program planning. And TEL is unique because it is the first and only Canadian combined language and literacy test. Language and literacy tests have traditionally been separate and frequently administered by individuals with complementary expertise. For instance, reading teachers would have to ask speech-language pathologists to complete a language assessment, and they, in turn, would have to ask reading teachers for a reading assessment. This was not really the best situation because, for the most part, 
Approximately 55 to 70 percent of those with language impairment also have reading problems and vice versa. And speech language pathologists and reading teachers use different tests with different norms, a situation more like comparing apples to oranges. Thus, it is important for language and literacy to be combined on the same test so that both groups of professionals may use the same test normed on the same children for both language and literacy purposes. TEL provides contemporary Canadian norms. For approximately the last two decades, Canadian children have outperformed American children on virtually every measure of reading. Canadians rank among the top five countries in the world, and the U.S. ranks around the 20th. Yet, our Canadian children are frequently tested on American tests with American norms, and sometimes those norms are outdated. Consequently, Canadian children having problems with reading and language are under-identified because Canadian children consistently outperform American children. Thus, American test norms are not valid for today's Canadian children. And we know by three years of age whether children are likely to have language and literacy problems. We also know that the first three years of schooling is a sensitive and critical time to be diagnosed and instructed. The earlier we diagnose, the greater the opportunity to maximize young children's chances to, en to enjoy language and literacy success. So TEL is based on the best of what is known in the research and the thorough review of the relevant research literature is provided for you in the comprehensive manual. An examiner may assess sections relevant to language or just the sections relevant to reading, or both. All are clearly marked in the TEL test booklet as well as the comprehensive manual. TEL affords direct comparisons. For example, Listening comprehension may be assessed in the oral narrative section and also assessed in the oral reading and reading comprehension section to provide direct comparisons of children's comprehension on different tasks, yet both are on comprehension. And TEL is designed to be key to remediation. As the TEL unfolds, each successive section and item in that section is more challenging than the previous section and items. In addition, each section tests for the fundamental indicators of children's ability. For instance, items in letter knowledge and naming assess whether a child can distinguish between letters of the alphabet, distinguish between numerals and other symbols, and name the letters of the alphabet while pointing to them. If a child is unsuccessful, you would go back to the prior section and assess a child's print understanding. In doing these two sections, you will have identified precisely where the child is having difficulty, you would know where the child needs help, and you would know what you need to focus on in a remediation plan. So TEL was designed by a reading researcher, a speech language researcher, and a test validation expert, Dr. Stephen Norris. So, TEL affords flexibility. The goal of TEL is to establish what a child knows, and to do so, we thoroughly test the fundamental components of emergent language and literacy. We go backwards or forwards, regardless of age, to establish what a child knows. Test administration is designed to give students every chance to perform optimally. In other words, for sections known to be potentially unfamiliar, TEL provides practice sessions before scoring starts. If children do not understand what they are being asked to do, they likely will not perform well. And examiners are then left with the question, did the children get these items incorrect because they did not understand the task or because they truly did not know the correct responses? TEL is designed <clears throat> to be dynamic by giving children an opportunity to learn the nature of an unfamiliar section before being tested, thereby ensuring that the results are valid. 
and we must be careful to provide clear instructional links for children. We must be careful also not to overestimate or underestimate what children can do based on their age or gender. Some three-year-olds can do better than some eight-year-olds, and some boys know more than we give them credit, and some girls know less. We develop quick charts at six-month intervals for ages four to eight to facilitate test interpretation at school and district levels. Denise will tell you more about this helpful feature. So tell <clears throat> also deals with the comorbidity of language. As we have mentioned prior, there is a high probability that anywhere from 55 to 70 percent of children will have both language and reading problems existing simultaneously. So TEL screens for children at risk of school failure. It reduces the possibility or over, of over and under identification of specific um, and language and literacy problems of children who are members of at-risk populations. And it fills a much-needed gap in norm diagnostic testing and complements existing tests. It also assesses skills important for social and academic success. It enhances diagnosis and intervention capacity building among teachers, speech language pathologists, educational psychologists, and early language um, and childhood educators. It builds capacity for interpreting children's language and literacy performance. Uh, Denise, we're on the wrong slide if you're listening. And can be used to monitor progress and can be used as a research instrument. And finally, the fundamental question. Why is TEL needed? Because it is important not to wait until children have started school to assess their language and literacy. Data from US and Canada shows that approximately 25% of all children starting school are at risk of school failure. And cognitive ability scores of low SES children are 60% lower than those of SES, of high SES children. It is critically important not to wait for children to fail once they are in school. Delays in diagnosis and intervention make it next to impossible for these children to ever catch up. So, TEL makes it possible to test children prior to, at the beginning of, and during schooling and to develop specific intervention plans to give children every opportunity to succeed. Now to you, Denise. So the TEL consists of eight early language and literacy sections. The sections have been organized developmentally with sections at the beginning of the test focusing on earlier developing literacy and language skills and the sections towards the end of the test focusing on later developing skills. So we begin with print understanding, followed by letter knowledge and naming, then phonological awareness, which you can see here is listed as supplementary. And this means that you may choose to include or not include this section in your assessment. Next, we have oral vocabulary, oral narratives, word reading, oral reading and reading comprehension, and finally, written spelling and writing. This photograph provides an overview of the TEL testing components. There are two easels, four storybooks, four story pages, a comprehensive manual, and a test booklet. In the next few slides, we want to point out to you how each section is organized and also describe some of the unique features of the TEL. So this is the front cover of the test booklet. This is one of the summary of score pages. I'm just gonna use my little arrow here. So one of the summary of score pages from the TEL test booklet. And you can see that some sections, the print understanding, the letter knowledge and naming, and the word reading have one component that children complete, but other sections 
the phonological awareness, the oral vocabulary and the oral narratives have several components for children to complete. Also, children at different ages will complete some components within these sections and not others. This may be because we assume they already have skills being tested. For example, we would assume an eight-year-old has letter knowledge and naming skills. And in other cases, we assume that the skill is developmentally beyond what we expect of children. For example, we would not expect a three-year-old to be able to write a story. However, if you have an eight-year-old who has significant difficulties on age-level reading tasks, you would want to go back and administer the letter, knowledge and naming. Uh, we also would like you to notice that each section is a unique color and we've used this feature in every component of the test to help you know which to test components to use for administration and scoring of each text, uh, sorry, each section of the test. So here you see the second of the summary of score pages and you can see the color coding for the uh, oral reading and reading comprehension and written spelling and writing sections. So, uh, so this diagram shows the administration options that are available for you uh, for uh, children who are aged four and five. So if you just wanted to administer the oral language section, the children would complete all four sections from oral vocabulary and two components within the oral nar narratives. And this would take you approximately 30 minutes to administer. If you chose to administer the literacy section alone, that would include print understanding, letter knowledge and naming, and word reading, all of which are single component sections, along with two components from oral reading and reading comprehension, and one component in the written spelling and writing. And again, this would take approximately 30 minutes. And you may complete the entire test, which is the oral language and literacy sections, and it's shown here as combined. And then finally, there's phonological awareness. For these age groups, that would involve completing all six components. And again, this can be administered separately, combined with oral language testing, or combined with literacy testing. Now this is just another diagram to show you what these options would look like for seven and eight year old children. So you can see how they look a little bit different for different age groups. So to complete oral language, to complete the oral language section, the children would complete all four components within oral vocabulary and all three components in oral narratives. To complete the literacy section, the administration would include word reading, one component with, within oral reading and reading comprehension, and the two components that make up written spelling and writing. You'll notice that print understanding and letter knowledge and naming are not included here. And this is because we assume that seven and eight year old children have acquired these skills. However, as mentioned previously, if you had a child who performed very poorly on the reading tasks, you'd want to go back and administer one or both of these sections. And again, you can administer both the language and literacy sections, which is shown as combined. And finally, phonological awareness, which for these age groups involves four components, but similar to the younger age groups, you can administer it separately or in combination with oral language testing or literacy testing. So our comprehensive manual provides a very detailed description um, of all the technical features of TEL, but for us to give you a brief overview, our sample included 1,061 children aged 3 to 8 inclusive from Western, Northern, Central and Atlantic Canada with roughly equal numbers of children in each age category. Reliability refers to the accuracy, consistency and stability of test results 
and was calculated in a variety of ways. And you can see here that ranges on the test sections is very high from 0 0.78 to 0 0.99. And ranges for composite scores were very high, ranging from 0 0.97 to 0.99. To support the validity in interpreting test scores of the TEL, we examined several different sources, and those are all listed here for you. And this allowed us to demonstrate the test as being extremely robust and defensible. So once you have administered TEL, the raw scores can be used to compute standard scores and percentile ranks at six month age intervals for each of the test sections and subsections, along with language, literacy and combined composite scores. Additionally, we provide a series of clinical and classroom case studies. The clinical case studies are children who have known language impairments and the classroom case studies are children who have known reading and writing difficulties. For all of these exemplars, we show comparisons of testing completed with commonly used language and literacy tests and the child's performance on the TEL, along with an analysis of their TEL performance and suggestions for intervention and instruction. And we've also included quick charts at six month age intervals and these are a very useful aid for a test administrator to be able to quickly determine if a child's score is at one or two standard deviations below the mean for their age group. And this information is often needed for placement decisions. So that brings us to the end of our presentation here. And we'd like to offer you the opportunity uh, to ask any questions or offer any comments that you have. So I'm just going to turn my mic off for a second. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and you can type them in the chat box. Uh, I see we already have one coming, so we'll just hold on a minute here. And while the questions are being typed in the chat box, I will let you know that we actually have a full day session coming up at ERLC on um, May 2nd with, um, with our presenters. And they are going to go through the tell, obviously, in more, in more detail. We have the day, so they'll look a little bit at the overview, how to administer the tell and the scoring, and then also an opportunity to look at the interpretation of the scores. So if you are interested in signing up for that, you can go onto the ERLC website. And um, like I said, the session's on May 2nd. And I'll turn it back over to Denise and Linda. I see there's a few questions in the chat box. I don't see my chat box, uh, uh, Siobhan. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just uh, read out Diane's question is, um, can be multiple times to an individual student to chart progress? Example. Is there a form A, form B, etc.? Okay, Linda, um, can, did you hear that? Yes, I did. Okay, did you want to go ahead with that or do you want me to answer? Uh, well, you can answer it. You go ahead if you want. Okay, so um, Diane, yes, you can use um, TEL to administer uh, progress of a child. Uh, we don't have a form A or form B to use, so you would administer um, the same subtest again. Um, and so we tend to recommend that if you're going to use it um, for progress monitoring, that you might try doing it uh, two times in a school year. And also there's going to be some subtests where, or sections of TEL where you probably won't need to um, use it a second time because the 
it will be obvious that the child has the skills. So one of these areas is, uh, as a good example of this, is letter naming, letter knowledge and naming, in that you might give the tell, see where the child's difficulties are, provide some instruction, and you'll know from your instruction that the child is now now knows um, the letters of the alphabet. So there would be no point in going back and giving the tell in that case. But in other subtests, you could go back and use it to monitor progress. Did you want to add anything to that, Linda? Well, I would say we do have a Form A. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Form A. Yeah, there, are, form there are no alternate forms, but I, I, the, your response is perfectly correct uh, in that case, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, we have a form A. <laughs> okay, the next question. Well, we is don't have only... nine years to develop a form B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next question is from Kim and is I'm interested in the reasoning behind the phonological awareness subtest being optional. So, Kim, the, there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, the first is that. Um, in designing this as a language and literacy test, not all children who have language difficulties and not all children who have literacy difficulties also have phonological awareness difficulties. So when we were um, compiling the test and we were looking at developing composite scores, then um, it, when the phonological awareness was just always in there, um, it actually could mask um, a child's overall performance if they had very strong phonological awareness skills. So in this case, um, we have some criteria as to when you would um, administer the phonological awareness subtest. The other reason is that most phonological awareness tests that are available have very few practice items on them. And in um, my experience doing research in phonological awareness and also in doing many, many, many um, assessments in phonological awareness, what one of um, the concerns we had was that many children were sealing out on phonological awareness tests, not because they had phonological awareness difficulties, but very often because they didn't understand the task. And so they reached sealing before they figured out actually what they were supposed to do. And so one of the things that we've done in the TELL, as Linda mentioned earlier, it's a very dynamic asset, uh, assessment tool. And so in phonological awareness in particular, we actually have a modeling phase, a learning phase, and then a practice phase before the child ever gets to test items. And so this is for us is to ensure that children, um, if they are performing poorly on the test items, it's because they don't have the skill or don't understand the skill, not because they haven't understood the task. And so our test is quite different from most others um, currently available uh, out there for you to use. Any other questions you might have? Any comments? Thank you, Jenna. What did she say? Do you I can see the, 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 the uh, chat? Great overview, thank you. Oh. And then Diane has just said, uh, this is very exciting. Looking forward to the session on May 2. Oh, great. We look forward to meeting you too, Diane. And we'll just hold on a second. I see Kim is typing. So we'll just see if there's another question that pops up here.
And Kim has said, Linda, you've done a lot of work with three exclamation marks and thanks, exclamation mark. Oh. <laughs> Tell him, thank you very much. <laughs> Yes, you're right, Kim. We have done a lot of work. Yes. <laughs> Linda likes to say she didn't have grey hair before she started this. <laughs> and it's true, Denise. <laughs> anyway. Um, Linda and I would really like to thank you for your interest in tell and participation in this webinar. And we'd also like to thank the Edmonton Regional Learning Consortium for planning this webinar and to the staff for their guidance. And thank you all for being here. Thank you very much. And thank you, Linda and Denise, for sharing tonight. Um, thank you. Thank you, You're welcome. And as I mentioned, for those of you that are interested, May 2nd is a full day session. So it's a great chance for you to come uh, see the materials um, in action and, and see the, the test in a little bit more detail. So if you have any colleagues that you think might be interested, please let them know to visit erlc.ca and they can uh, register through there. The registration link will be opened until April 27th. So again, thanks for your time this evening and enjoy the rest of your week. Siobhan, can, can Denise and I talk?